In this video, you'll learn how to find, install, and remove software packages using the DNF command on CentOS, Fedora, and Red Hat-based Linux distributions. The first example we'll look at is how to list packages. The command for that is DNF list. By default, the list command shows all packages, both installed and available. To list only installed packages, just add installed to the command. We can also list packages by keyword. For example, if I type SSH followed by an asterisk, it will list all installed packages that start with SSH. If you put the asterisk at the beginning, it will list packages that end with SSH. If you put an asterisk at both the beginning and end, it will list packages that have SSH anywhere in the name. Another common way to filter the list is by piping the output to the grep command. While DNF list is great for seeing what's installed or available, sometimes you need to find packages based on a description or a broader term. For that, we use the DNF search command. For example, let's try to find the package that provides the Apache web server. The search term I used, web server, didn't return any Apache-related packages. So, I'll run the search again using Apache to be more specific. This time we got several results grouped into three categories. The first group shows packages with Apache in both the name and description. The second group lists packages with Apache in the name only, and the third group shows packages with Apache in the description only. Here's the package that provides Apache for Red Hat-based systems. It's called HTTPD. Next, if we want more information on a package, we can use the DNF info command. Now that we know the name of the package, let's install it using the DNF install command. By default, it will ask for confirmation before installing the package. If you want to skip that, you can add the minus Y option to the install command. The dnf install command is also the recommended way to install .rpm packages. Unlike the old rpm command, dnf automatically handles and installs any missing dependencies the package needs. Now let's see how to upgrade packages. Start by checking for available updates using either the dnf check dash update or dnf check dash upgrade command. Then if you want to upgrade a single package, run the dnf upgrade command followed by the package name. If you want to upgrade all packages, just type dnf upgrade. Note that if you update all packages, and that includes the Linux kernel, then you'll need to restart the system to load the new kernel, or the system will continue running on the old kernel. Now let's move on to removing packages. To uninstall a package, use the dnf remove command followed by the package name. For example, to remove the Apache web server package we installed earlier, you would type dnf remove hdpd. After uninstalling a package, run the dnf auto remove command to remove any dependency packages that are no longer needed. DNF keeps a history of all package transactions. You can use the DNF history command to view past actions like installs, updates, and removals. You can also undo past transactions using the DNF history undo, followed by the transaction ID. For example, my last transaction was removing the Apache server, and if I undo it, the Apache server will be reinstalled. One important thing to keep in mind is that the undo command works best when the system hasn't changed much since the original transaction. If there have been other updates or changes since then, the undo might not work as expected and could lead to system issues or dependency conflicts. Now let's take a look at package groups. These are collections of related software designed to serve a common purpose. To see a list of all available and installed groups, run the DNF group list command. There are two types of groups, environment groups and regular groups. 
Regular groups are just a collection of packages, while environment groups consist of packages as well as other groups designed to set up specific environments, like a desktop. To get more details about a specific group, use the DNF group info command. Here's the list of other groups installed by the server with GUI environment group, which sets up the GNOME desktop environment. To install a group, use the DNF group install command. By default, only mandatory packages and groups will be installed. If you want to include optional packages as well, add the minus minus with optional flag. Before we finish, let's take a quick look at DNF repositories, the sources from which DNF downloads and installs packages. To see a list of all currently enabled repositories on your system, use the DNF repolist command. You'll find the configuration files for DNF repositories in the etcyum.repos.d directory. And here, for example, if we look at the centos.repo file, you will see that there is more than one repository being configured inside it. Each section starts with square brackets and represents a different repository. The ID of the repository is found inside these square brackets. The metalink or base URL option specifies the actual URL where the packages for this repository are downloaded from. GPG check specifies whether to perform a GPG signature check on packages downloaded from this repository. If you want to disable GPG checking, change the value to zero. The enabled option specifies whether this repository is active or not. If set to one, the repository is active and DNF will use it. If set to zero, the repository is disabled. Most of the repositories in this file are disabled. That's why when we run the DNF repo list command, only three repositories show up. If you want to see all repositories, including the disabled ones, run the command DNF repo list all. And that brings us to the end of our guide on using the DNF command for package management on CentOS Fedora and Red Hat. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Linux tips and tutorials.